And here's how it shakes down the Rangers and the Canadians in original six showdown. It's going to be sensational. It starts Wednesday on CBC at 7 o'clock Eastern. You can catch all the games on Sportsnet now, live streaming coming your way for each and every game. Let's get you to Montreal for Habs ringside host Kyle Bukowskis to set the scene. It's the Habs and the Rangers. Well, David, it's a rematch of the 2014 Eastern Conference Finals here in the first round of the 2017 Stanley Cup playoffs between the Canadians and Rangers. And in terms of that matchup three years ago, it's a series that many Habs fans will tell you they never truly got a fair fight. And we all remember the moment in game one when Chris Kreider came sliding into Carey Price and ended his season with all the pressure then falling on the shoulders of Dustin Tokarski who had zero playoff experience and the Rangers ultimately advancing to the cup final in six games. However, this time around Montreal will have a healthy price and another thing that the Habs can hang their hats on heading into game one at the Bell Center is the fact that they swept all three games versus New York in the regular season. David. And Kyle, you're absolutely right. There are the numbers. It was a, a sweep in convincing fashion as well. Montreal outscoring the Blue Shirts 12-7 to 7 in those games. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. We'll find out if it means something, I guess, on Wednesday. The players on both sides, though, they say they're eager to get this thing going. Yeah, me personally, obviously, I can't wait to get it going. And uh, having a... Uh... A chance not to play last year was difficult, so you've been waiting uh, all year to have that opportunity to play in the playoffs, and uh, you know, just exciting. I think once uh, once the playoffs start, you know, it, it's been proven in the past that uh, eighth seed can win. It doesn't really matter where you finish or what your record was against the team. It's uh, um, you know, it takes a lot. Uh, a lot goes into winning the, the cup, and um, obviously, we've got to start with a series against the Rangers and try and build uh, build our way up against them. All right, so the scene has been set. It's going to be very interesting, an original six showdown. You look at the Habs season, 13-1-1, a historic start for them, a little bit of a lull, then they fire their coach, bring in Claude Julien. They're back on the right side of the ledger. Carey Price, though, they're going to go as far as he carries them. Is he the best player to not be a Stanley Cup winner at this point in his career? Well, 29 turn and 30, he, he's on a mission. I mean, mm -hmm. he desperately wants this to happen this year. I love this matchup for him. And look, since Terry has gone, Julian has taken over, he's been on his game as well as we've seen him play recently. I love the Ranger matchup. I think it's a good test for them, but I think they get by this and they'll build off this. Carey wants a chance to win the Cup. He's moving into that age where he needs to win one soon. Yeah, listen, no one's questioning their defense, their goaltending. What about the offense, though? And their main guy, their captain, Max Pacioretty, their offense goes through him. He's the catalyst. His numbers, though, vary through the season, Elliot. How do you explain the lack of offensive production under Claude Julien? You know what I think it is? It's the way that Claude Julien wants him to play. Michelle Tierney had a system that allowed his forwards to blow the zone. He had no problem with a defenseman banging the puck off the glass, and then you go and you create races. Under Claude Julien, it's very different. He wants you packed in tight. You know, when the Boston Bruins made their coaching change, one thing that Bruce Cassidy said was, I don't need to change the way that we play defense. Mm -hmm. Claude Julien coaches it well. Our players know how to play it well. You have to stay low. You have to stay as a group. You're not allowed to blow the zone until somebody has the puck and you can all support it together. I think when you have a guy who it depends so much on speed and those foot races like Pacioretty does, I don't think Julian wants him to do it as much, so it makes him harder for him to break out with goals. And they're going to need some goals from him. They only have two 20-goal scorers in uh, Byron and Pat Uh When you talk about defense and you talk about all those acquisitions the Habs made at the trade deadline, the big acquisition was last year uh, picking up Shea Weber. What do you expect from Weber here? Well, look, what he's done five-on-five five has been tremendous. He's been so solid. Doesn't give up hardly a chance five-on-five. Five. Very seldom gives up a goal five-on-five, five, especially in the last part of the season. But you've got to be careful with him as the playoffs go on because his foot speed can become an issue. Mm. We see in these clips where he gets caught standing still, and in the playoffs, the pace is much quicker. So Julian and the defensive coach are going to have to watch his foot speed, monitor him where he is because he got in a lot of trouble last year in Nashville late. Early on, I think he's going to be terrific, but as it wears on, where will he be? He's that important, he's that good, but... Foot speed's an issue. I think that's what I like what Montreal did the last week of the season. They rested right. him. Thought that was a really shrewd move, yep. Dave. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be funny. We're always going to link Nashville and Montreal and those the, the big yep. trade, uh, yep. Weber for Subban. And Nobody does success. that. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he's made a career, right? <laughs>